You know, it's interesting because there's definitive stages. Um, I know when I was little, my parents used to drop us off at the theater every weekend. And that's where I saw Benji, that's where I saw E.T. And I remember crying in the theater in both those movies and being shocked that something could make me do that. And so I just used to write short stories a lot um, as a kid and then became a voracious reader when our TV broke uh, when I was nine and my parents refused to replace it, which was of course horrifying for me and my, my siblings, but it forced me to read. And I literally I would go to the library, check out 20 books a week and just read. And that absolutely influenced my love of storytelling. And then when I got to high school, I became obsessed with soap operas. And I read an article in Soap Opera Digest, that's how obsessed I was, that talked, it was an interview with the soap opera writer. And that's the first time I realized, oh, somebody gets paid to do that. And so that was my goal when I set my sights on UCLA, was to write soap operas. Um, once I got there and started hanging out at the film school, I'll say I had my sights got set a little higher. <laughs> because you get the opportunity to see movies and great movies on the big screen. I like immersed in these great films and I started to see myself doing that and it went from wanting to be a writer to suddenly I want to direct. And I think it's because it was the first time again that I understood that there's somebody in charge of all of that and that's a director. Well the absolute most important lesson that I learned at UCLA was to overcome no. And that is because, you know, you can only apply your junior year at UCLA. So I hung out at the film school those first two years, worked on student films, worked on the soap opera, met all the professors, took as many classes as I could without being a student. And like I was sure I was gonna get in. And I applied and then I got a rejection letter and that wrecked me because I, I knew for a fact this is what I'm supposed to do. And it was one of the worst nights of my life and had a very long uh, cry. And then the next day I said, let me go to the counselor. So I went to the counselor and told him I wanted to appeal the decision. And he said, you can't do that. So went home again, had another cry and then just wrote a letter and poured myself into a letter, essentially saying why they made a mistake and sent it to the head of the film school, Ruth Schwartz. I don't know how I got her information or how it even got to her, but two days later, I get a phone call and it's her. And she said that she got my letter and we're letting you in. And that absolutely changed the trajectory of my life. And I've actually, Never been able to, I think during that moment, once I started having success, I tried to track her down so I could thank her again, um, but haven't ever been able to track her down. Working with actors. Uh, like if I ever become head of UCLA Film School, I'm absolutely gonna implement that. There was not enough um, interaction between us and the theater school, and it's literally, we're right next to each other. And directing actors is the one thing that you're not taught and I think is such a learning curve for directors. Yeah, you, you have to know how to talk to actors, work with actors. So I got that from Sundance when I got into Sundance and they made all of us directors take an acting class. Scary thing I've ever done in my life, but what I learned that day in, in, in that class, I've, like I've kept hold of and it absolutely influenced by directing from that point forward. I think, I think there was only two of us in my class. Yeah, and I remember, yeah, with my thesis film, there was a lot of controversy about my, my thesis film um, because um, it didn't get put into spotlight, which is the end they choose the, like the 10 best films and they invite the industry to come and see. And there was, uh, a number of professors who were adamant that the film needed to be there, and but there were a couple fighting against it, and it became a really big thing. Um, and it felt very strange, I mean, I'm a student, you know, to 
to have one, have people fighting for you and also for others to not see you or see the value in your story. And uh, yeah, that was, that was tough. Yeah, when you go to film school, you're going because there's only one thing you want to do, which is make movies. And I know graduating, I was like, okay, I'm gonna graduate and scripts are gonna come flying at me, um, which is the first thing that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, it's interesting, I gave myself a year. I said, for a year, I'm going to work and get into the industry, and if I don't get in, then I'll go to grad school for film. And the first thing I did coming out of film school, I had a bunch of meetings based on my thesis film, but I had no script. So I'm sitting literally with the heads of studios. I remember specifically sitting with Stephanie Elaine, who at that time was head of Columbia, black woman, someone I revered. And everybody asked the same thing. What do you want to do? What do you have? And I had nothing. So I came out really unprepared. And I felt like I wasted so many opportunities. So. That was the first knock. Okay, scripts aren't gonna come to me. So then I applied for an internship, the uh, Academy of Television Arts and Sciences internship. And then at the same time, I had the opportunity to, um, to have an interview on A Different World, which was my favorite show at that time. It was a horrific interview, again, totally unprepared, totally blew it, um, but then got the internship. And so they literally gave you a stipend and I worked at Quincy Jones Entertainment. And at that point then I felt like I was kind of in, but I still didn't know what I was gonna do. And I remember they had a script. This is again, when you don't know. Uh, they had a script of a TV show that they wanted to do, but they were unhappy with the script. I'm like at a film school intern and me and another uh, assistant there, her name was Shelly Meals, we said, why don't we rewrite the script? Which, of course, you cannot do. But we rewrote it and handed it in, and the, the heads of the company, heads of TV, were like, this is so good. We want to use this version of it. So they were going to get us into, uh, into the guild so that it could be legal. Uh, <laughs> but at that point, um, the person who got the job over me at Different World had been messing up and not taking the job seriously. And I actually got a call from Susan Thales Hill, who said, hey, we want to bring on another person. And she let me, so I, I left Quincy Jones Entertainment and went to work as a writer's apprentice on A Different World. And that, again, changed the trajectory of my life.